everyone. This is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am here today with a fun video blog rather than more of an experiment or tutorial because I am very excited about the project that I'm dying for. Today I am going to be dyeing some wool roving from Knit Picks um, and I'm going to be dyeing it in a series of blues because I want to spin a really bulky yarn to use to make a baby pod or cocoon for my newborn photo shoot um, after the baby is born in October. So from my past dyeing experiments, I've learned that I will think that I have an easier time spreading the color around the fiber when I add the acid source, um, the vinegar, directly to the dyes that I'm going to apply to the, rope, to the fiber rather than pre-soaking the fiber in a acidic solution. So I'm going to start by adding this roving to just a container of plain water and I am going to let, well I'm going to add some more water to this, <laughs> um, but I'm going to let this sit for about an hour so the fibers can get really saturated and then I will come back, we'll mix up some dyes and start painting. Alright, let's mix some dyes. I'm going to be using some McCormick's food coloring, um, some more McCormick's, and then some Wilton's food coloring in violet, delphinium blue, and teal. Since I'm using the McCormick's food coloring, these colors aren't going to be extremely reproducible. But in each of the following cups here, I have water at a ratio of one and a half teaspoons of white vinegar per one cup of water. I'm going to start by, I have a very tiny bit left of um, some McCormick's Neon Blue and I'm just going to suck some water into the container to remove and use up all that's remaining in this eyedropper. So see there's a fair amount of color even when you don't think there's necessarily anything left. Now I've got some purple and I am going to take a fork coat the fork in some of the violet dye and mix this with that neon blue making a nice dark color. So one of the larger portions whoops. well I guess I uh, maybe that one on the outside two, three Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten drops of black. And to that, I'm going to add a healthy forkful of delphinium blue. Now once I've added one of these forks to the solutions, I don't want to re-dip um, into uh, whatever the container is. But let's take a peek at what these colors look like so far. So we've got a very bright blue, and then we've got a deeper kind of bluey black color. Um, but you can see maybe you can't see it super well, but there is some wicking of each of the colors, which should give some fun variation to um, what I am creating. Alright, so that's two colors. And what about another one? Well, these are pretty concentrated. And so I thought it would be fun to add sort of a lighter shade of one of these colors. The way I'm going to achieve a slightly lighter color is um, using a fairly simple method. I'm going to take some of this really dark blue dye and add it 
um, to this dilution of water and vinegar. And I'm going to add one more syringe full. So what we have over here, even though it may not be totally obvious, let's see if we can tell the difference, but this um, little cup is a much less, there we go, you can kind of see the tint, it's a less concentrated version of the color. In fact, you can barely see the coloration on here, but I'm still planning on using it um, for some subtle color in our container. Okay, and what about the very last guy? Well, in that, since I may as well mix something up, I'm going to use some just straight delphinium blue. I'm going to get like a nice forkful. Now I can clean up my area a bit, remove these dyes, and set up to start painting. I have squeezed most of the excess water out of the roving, so that way it will take up as much um, as I can add from my dyes. And so now I'm going to start adding. Kind of randomly spraying color. I like to add it in this sort of zigzaggy pattern because then if there's colors that are going to wick out to give us some breaking of these interesting colors that I have started with, uh, we're more likely to see it. And so just from like these brief pats right here, you can already see, mm, I guess I need to move the camera closer, you can see that there's some variation in the color already. And it's because, as I've told you before, black is made up of many, many different colors. So. But these, these subtle variations are what's going to give the bulky yarn some gorgeous, gorgeous variation. Um, as we spin. Now it's not entirely necessary for me to be uh, changing and washing the syringe as I'm doing this, but you know, is my hand blocking that entirely? So the mixture I'm using now is the dye that had some purple in it in addition to some electric, or sorry, neon blue. Now, if you watched my yarn dyeing gender announcement, you'll see that with very low acid and even no heat, certain colors start sticking to the yarn right away. And I believe that it's predominantly reds that, oops, that seem to do this. Um, based on what I saw from that experiment. So that's why um, it's really fun to have and work with dyes that have both red and blue food coloring. Now if you're dealing with commercial acid dyes, the results that you see might be totally different. And I will also add that the yarn 
that I've started, or not the yarn, sorry, the, the fiber that I've started with here is not white. So that way there's also, and it is slightly heathered, so it'll also give us some fun colorations. Oops. But you want to be fairly gentle when you're manipulating the fiber. And it's worth checking the insides to see that you're getting colorations that you want. But it's funny because this might end up being a bit more purple than I had intended, which is, I would say, is largely a result of the, uh, the black that I had added. But I think one way to combat this is to continue to add color to the different sections and not push it around as much. I don't know if you can see, but when I'm adding more dye, I've, I've added more dye to two of the top sections up there, you can see less of the red from what you can see down below. Now I'm adding the much less concentrated color to a section just out of some curiosity. Because even if I add tons and tons of dye to this section, I won't get as much color because, you know, there's a limit to how much dye you can add to a section just based on the volume of water that you're using. Let me move this closer. And you can, you know, the amount of dye that you can apply depends greatly on the amount of water that's remaining in your yarn to begin with. But if you are going to dilute your colors, it is important to remember that you also need to add vinegar to that water because this yarn or this fiber has not been pre-soaked with vinegar. I'm going to bring you over so you can see a bit better the difference in coloration. So these are the same proportion of dye colors, it's just this has been diluted heavily compared to that. It's much easier to control your tone with dilutions than it is to control it with, say, just at applying less dye to the section um, because you'll still get a darkness of color. Now I did a whole dyeing experiment with some delphinium blue. The delphinium blue food coloring does contain, also contain some red. So even though this um, last dye pot is really mostly a blue, we um, are still bound to see some interesting um, subtle variations of color in this section. But even if this ends up being a little more purpley than I had intended, that's okay. My husband's bedroom when he was a... Oh, you can see the purple kind of coming out. My husband's bedroom as a child was very purple. So, you know, we have no... Um, lost love in our family for shades of purple. But one of the things I like the most about dyeing yarn in my kitchen, especially with food coloring based dyes, is being pregnant 
there's nothing I need to be concerned about. I'm not inhaling any chemicals or anything that one could would not necessarily, you know, these are all things that are safe to eat. So therefore, I am not concerned about any um, dangers to my unborn little boy. And I know when I spin, I'm not gonna end up with regular repeats of color. Like I might as if I were dying just yarn as opposed to um, dying roving here. But you do want to check to make sure you're penetrating along the whole way. Unless you want white spots, white spots can be very fun. But I happen to enjoy a bit more saturation in my colors. you might wonder what I do with excess colors that I have because you know I have a lot of this blue and a lot of some of these other shades left over. Frequently I will combine them and that's where the dyes for some of my cake dyeing experiments have come from. But it all depends on my mood. Um, you can, I'll also store the dyes in a Tupperware container to save for a later day. Um, but I always try to refer you back to the correct video um, where I mixed the dyes so you can see what I started with. But today I started with three cups of water in my dye and as you can see um, I've depleted, well I'll show, I guess I'll bring you back over and show you at the end, but I've depleted a lot of it. So you can certainly use far less than three um, cups of dye, depending on the concentration of your dye, etc. But I find that this helps me get good coverage, nice coverage. And the extra water might pool, but that can give us some other interesting effects. So I'm actually going to, um, there's very little of this purpley bit left. Hmm. I'm going to combine it with the darker color that we had. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and combine it, combine all of them together except for the palest one. And then this is going to be the color that I'm going to use just at these little ends. Not even adding very much. Right. Okay, I'm going to bring you around so you can see how little dye is left um, from what I compared to what I started with. This one is just wash water, and this is what my hand-painted roving looks like. I've placed another piece of plastic wrap all over the entire piece of roving. Um, and I'm now going to roll it up kind of like a jelly roll. The re rationale for putting another piece 
on top was just to try to keep the colors in. jelly roll on a plate. I'm going to cover the entire thing with more plastic wrap because we do not want to have any, um, we don't want it to dry out and burn the roving at all, but some space for the steam to escape is okay. And now I'm going to put this in the microwave on three minute increments until the whole thing is steaming hot. So my roving has been cooking in the microwave for a total of six minutes and it is quite warm so even though it didn't ever really start bubbling and steaming. So I'm gonna let this sit um, until it cools down considerably and then I will give it heat um, a second time. After an hour of cooling off there's still a fair amount of heat in the roving so I am not going to zap it a second time and just going to let it continue to cool off until it is room temperature. Just to show you this is the amount of dye that we have left over and I will use it for another dyeing activity in the future. So I could have had this cool a bit faster if I had been willing to um, if I had decided to unwrap the jelly roll a bit um, sooner and then that would have helped with the cooling. But since I know blues take a longer time to adhere, I really wanted to let it um, cool off as much as possible naturally. Oh, it looks like we did get some fun, pretty deep colors. And so now, gently, I mean, this is very cool to the touch now, but I'm going to gently put it in this bucket with some running water and rinse it using some mild dish soap until the water runs clear. Without any soap, we need so the water doesn't have a very much color in it at the moment, so most of the color has stayed in the yarn. Um, I have not created the most blue colorway, but I still feel like this could be fairly masculine for my son. But again, we'll see how it really turns out once it dries. And then even more so once um, the yarn ha has actually been spun, what the coloration is like. So here we have it, our finished um, dyed roving. I'm hoping that I will have finished spinning the bulky yarn that I want for my baby pod um, out of this fiber by the time I edit and publish this video. So. Hopefully, at the end of the video, you will see a picture of what the yarn looks like. Thank you so much for watching along on this vlog. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope you have a great day.